Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Here I am. Monica Corrado here, the GAPS chef, holistic nutritionist, certified GAPS practitioner. Uh, my website is simplybeingwell.com. And welcome to everyone, folks that have been with me for weeks, months. Uh, other folks that are just new, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Ask the Gap Chef Facebook Live. I do this every Tuesday morning, 1130 Mountain Time. And I'm happy, happy to be here with all of you uh, answering your questions about how to cook for the Gap's diet or implement the Gap's diet, etc. Um, again, I'm not a medical doctor. I have to say that up front. And nothing I have said, I say has been um, approved by the FDA. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know who these people are, new people. Hello, Shukri. Hello. Uh, I'm not sure how to say your name, but welcome. Hello, Dawn. Yay, from Maryland. Yahoo, Maryland. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Haley. Hello. Hello, Leonie from the UK. Good to have you with us. And hello, everyone else who hasn't said hello, but is here. Hello, Sharice. Good to have you. Welcome, welcome. Good to be back, everyone. It's been a crazy month for me, as many of you know, and it is wonderful to be back with all of you. Christina is here. Excellente. Welcome, Christina. Hello, Vicky. Good to have you. Hope you're well. Hope everyone is well. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. Hello, Karen. Good to have you, Karen, and everyone else. Yay. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for welcoming me back. Yes. Good to be back in the saddle. Good to be back teaching. When you have an aching heart, just go back and do something that you love, and you'll feel better. So I'm feeling better. Hello, Joanna. Hello, Niska. Good to have you. Yes, you are welcome, Veronica. I'm, uh, hopefully, I am... I'm trying to be available as much as I can to you. I want to thank some of my, um, some of my, uh, I don't know what you want to call you, students, I suppose, students out there, people that have been doing gaps for a while. Thank you for jumping in on the page with some of your wisdom, uh, sharing things with each other. Thank you, Haley, so much. Appreciate it. Hello, Western Montana. Love it. Hello, Carol. Love it. Good, good, good. What else have we got here? Okay, what are we looking at? We're looking at, I thought I saw Missouri in, come in. Woohoo! I'm hoping MO is Missouri. Yes, good. All right, so the first thing I want to say to everyone, uh, thank you for your prayers and your thoughts, really. Yes, I know grief moves, and I will be uh, doing my best to... Uh, deal with all of that. Hello, Liz. Great to have you. Good to have you. Hello, Victoria. Hooray, hooray. Southern California. I love that. Okay, so just a couple things, everyone. So happy you're with me. Please let people know that I'm available as a resource here every week. Hopefully, we won't have any more of these crazy weeks where I can't be with you because of travel. Um, Okay, so again, I'm a certified GAPS practitioner. I'm on Dr. Natasha's teaching team. I help to train her certified GAPS practitioners and her coaches. I'm here on this page and doing this live because I really want to assist. I want to help get the information out there, the correct information um, out there to as many people as I can to help people heal. Um, to help people feel better. There's lots of very sick people, as you all know, and um, I'm doing my best to be available. The first thing I want to say, I'm going to say it over and over again, please read the book. Um, I know you're probably sick of hearing it, but I read the book. We all have to read the book. Go back to the source, which is Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. Go back to the yellow book. Go back to the blue book. Look, look, look. She has answered so many questions in there. And if you want to do the diet well and easily or as easily as possible, you need to have the information from the source. I will do my best in this 
uh, little time together to accurately tell you what the diet is about, how to implement it, um, how to use the different cooking techniques, what Dr. Natasha shares, etc., etc. But I too go back to the source. So uh, before you go to any other um, Facebook page, uh, please, unless it's Dr. Natasha's, which I'm starting to post on our page, which is just gaps, right? Go to Dr. Natasha's page, see what she has to say. Um, look in the book and also someone very smart. All, many of, all of you are smart, but someone, I can't remember who it was, uh, suggested to me that our page is searchable. Yay. So go to the search bar it's possible that someone has asked the question. Go to the search bar. See if you could find the answer on our page. I love that. I forgot to even mention that. So that's a wonderful thing for everyone to do, including me, to see what's out there and what have we talked about. So the search bar is wonderful. And also do, do check Dr. Natasha's website, which is gaps.me. Gaps.me has an FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions, hundreds of answers there for very specific things that you can search. So do go there also. Okay, let's see. Hello, hello to Shannon. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. All right, good questions, good questions. I love it. So Cherise says, I read the, read the book five minutes a day. I tried to do the diet for over a year without reading. Bad idea. Five minutes a day, folks. Great idea. You also don't have to read it from front to back. Start on uh, with a chapter that really interests you. Start, you know, just get in there and look. Look how much I've read this book, everybody. Look what I've done to my book. This part actually comes out of my book, right? So... I'm reading it, you're reading it, we're all reading it. I'm highlighting all sorts of things. So if I look like this, I hope your book looks like this too. All right, or maybe not. But it's not because I don't take care of my books, it's just that I'm in it a lot. Okay, I know, haha, -ha, hysterical, right? All right, folks, so I want to start today with a teaching with just a little piece, which I think will help all of you. I hope it helps. So one of the things that I do when I teach is I try to take a lot of information and figure out how to A, figure out the patterns and B, figure out how could I most easily give this to you in a way that makes it makes it easy, in a way that makes sense, in a way that's easy to understand, right? That's why I wrote my little book on meat stock versus bone broth. Golly gee willikers, that was seven years ago or more. And then my little book on how to culture dairy, and then my little book on how to ferment gap style, and then we pulled it all together in one book. But the point is I try to make it easy. So let's make this easy, ready? This particular piece of teaching uh, is something that I came up with, I don't know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, when I started teaching gaps uh, to people, not just being a practitioner. Um, in any case, here's, here's the deal. The gaps diet is made of four things. The diet, the food part. I'm not even gonna talk about detox, that's over there. I have talked about detoxification, the five detox baths. That's available for you in one of my um, uh, Facebook Lives and YouTubes. I'm moving it to YouTube so people can read it. I mean, watch it and learn. Okay, so here's four things about the GAPS diet, GAPS Nutritional Protocol. Learn these four things and it will answer many, many questions about why do we do what we do? How long do we do what we do? What's going on, Alfie? Okay, number one, the first most important thing, according to me, but this is how I teach it, the GAPS diet is about removing, stopping injury. Stop injury. Number one, I said I'm going to talk about the four pillars. First pillar, stop injury. We must stop eating foods that work like sandpaper on an open wound. Okay, those are all of your, it's going to be gluten, it's casein, 
It's these long chain carbohydrates. We call them, um, those are specific carbohydrates, as you will, complex carbohydrates, starches, big molecules, okay? We're going to stop eating the foods that injure. Those are genetically modified foods, right? So those are processed foods. Those are, um, so no GMOs, no processed foods, no casein, no gluten, uh, no starches and long uh, complex carbohydrates, okay? No dyes, no Golly gee, there's so much C-R-A-P out there, right? Um, no inulin, no FOS, F-O-S, fructo oligosaccharides, right? So the first thing we do is we stop injuries. We, so we stop injuring that area of the digestive system that is inflamed, that is damaged. We stop injury. That's the first pillar. Second pillar, heal and seal. Heal and seal. What's number two? Heal and seal. How do we heal and seal? With meat stock. Short cooked, meaty bones in a little bit of water. Okay? All right. So we heal and seal with meat stock. And there's a lot of good information about meat stock now. Thank you. Thank you, God. And thank you. I would say thank you, me, but that's not nice. Thank you, right? All the articles on meat stock. We're doing meat stock. I've been trying for years to get people to not make bone broth. Okay, so, so number one, stop injury. Number two, heal and seal, okay, with meat stock. Very good. All right, number three, what are we going to do now? We're going to starve pathogens. We're going to starve pathogens. How do we starve pathogens? How do we starve them? We take out the foods that they eat. So no starches, no potatoes, no rice, no grains, right? So no grains, no starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potato, hmm, no parsnips, right? So no starches, no sugar, no refined sugar, no maple sugar, no maple syrup, no sugar. In the beginning, no sugar. When I work with people, I take out all sugar, including fruit. No sugar. We starve pathogens. Okay? All right. So that's number three. Third pillar, starve pathogens. Don't feed them. If you feed them, they're going to keep growing. Right? And number four is rebuild the microbiome, rebuild the gut flora. How do we do that? We do that with fermented foods. That could be sauerkraut, it could be beet kvass, it could be cabbage tonic, it could be pickles that you make, it could be beets, it could be vegetable medley, made only with kefir whey. Very important, okay? Um, so all those fermented lacto ferments, those are vegetables, those are tonics, those are beverages, right? Cultured dairy, also long cultured gap style dairy, right? No lactose in there, pre-digested casein in there, right? So yogurt, kefir, kefir, um, uh, gap sour cream, which is cultured cream, right? Kefir cream, right? All those things rebuild the gut flora. Rebuild the gut flora. All right, so those are the four pillars. All right, now, in number two, which is heal and seal, we also add in healing foods, fat, and lots of it. Healthy fat, healthy animal fat, right? Some coconut oil, very good. Some olive oil, never heated, very good. Lots of good tallow, lard, um, duck fat, chicken fat, right? Good fats. All right, so, um, and of course, other healing foods in number two are organ meats and egg yolks and things like that. So I'm just trying to give you a frame, 
All right, those are the four things you need to think about when you're eating for gaps. One, stop injury. Two, heal and seal and use healing foods, right? Meat stock, fats, eggs, organ meats, yeah? Three, starve pathogens, no sugar, no starch. Remember, if something is not a protein or a fat, it's a sugar. That's it. You get three options here, three macronutrients. Some people count water as the fourth. That's fine. But if it's not protein, if you're looking at food, if it's not protein and it's not fat, it's sugar. Okay? Now, complex carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, they're all sugar. Vegetables are sugar. Fruit is sugar. Grains, which we don't eat, are sugar. Beans are sugar. Everything that's not, right? Plants are sugar. Ah, did I say that? I did. Plants are also very fibrous, right? So part of that number one, stop injury, in the beginning is we don't have any fibrous vegetables, right? We peel and seed our vegetables that we cook in meat stock. We don't eat celery because celery is like number one fiber. Okay, so those are the four pillars as I have defined them. Dr. Natasha doesn't write it this way. She doesn't talk about it this way. But as I'm teaching and working with people, to try and give you a template. What are we doing here? You know, these are big books. Well, I mean, this one's not so big, but here we go. Here's the big one, right? The big blue one. These are big books. How do we make sense of this thing? And so if you understand, hello puppy. My puppy just got a haircut. Hello puppy dog. Um, if we understand the four pillars, then you can kind of, I hope, uh, go along and be like, oh, why am I doing this? Why am I not eating celery right now? Oh, injury. I'm stopping injury. Hmm. Why am I peeling that zucchini? Or why do I peel cucumbers before when I, when I bring them in on stage five? Why? Stop injury. Okay. So stop injury, heal and seal, and add in healing foods, starve pathogens, and rebuild the gut flora. These things must be done all at the same time if you want gaps to work. So I have a, uh, an article I wrote probably four years ago, maybe five, on my website, simplybeingwell.com. Go to articles. I have to fix it so you can search, but if you can just go and look for the article called Something about gaps is a juggling act. You have to keep these all these balls in the air at the same time for maximum um, healing. All of them, those four balls need to stay in the air at the same time. So that article, as I said, is, and I'm, I can go ahead and grab it and throw it on our page. And uh, then you can all read it. All right, I hope that was helpful. Let me go see. If anyone has any questions here. All right, Veronica asks, let me see. I said hello to Shannon. Hello, Uma Sumeya. Uma Sumeya, I hope I said that right. Welcome. Megan, Eileen, welcome. Carol, Carpinelli, woo! -hoo! Love that nice Italian name. Um, I love all names. Hello, Jennifer, nice to have you. Mara, good to have you. Mwah. Love Tamara and all of yours. Hello, Christina, Haboon, Ali, Ali Rose is here. Christina asks, what about celery juice? Celery juice, okay, you tell me. What about celery juice? If you're using a juicer that takes out all the fiber, then celery juice is great, right? Because juicers take out the fiber, so you're fine. All right, let's see. Let's go, Lilo. Hello. Okay, hello, Dawn. Hello, Caroline. Hello, Anna Maria. Nice to have you. Hello, Otilia. Nice to have you. All right, let me go back to questions. Here we go. All right, here we go. Hello, Roseanne. Okay. All right, Veronica's question is, how often and how long can we eat in a day? How many hours should we have at least between meals? I don't count meat stock as a meal. 
Dr. Natasha wrote that it is good to start around 10 o'clock, but what time should be the last meal? Okay, so here's the thing. Again, just like always, um, it really depends on where you are on the diet. Are you in full gaps? Are you on intro? It depends on, so what stage you want? Like, are you on full? Are you on intro? It also depends on like, did you just start? Or have you been doing this for a while? So when we first come to GAPS, you want to eat all day long because you are malnourished. Most GAPSters are malnourished. Why? Because their digestive system, I don't want to say it's broken, but it's kind of broken. It's not working the way it needs to be working, right? Don't, get, don't freak out, I just said broken, but obviously your digestive system is impaired in some way, right? That's why you're at in GAPS. So most gapsters most people by the time they get to the gaps diet they are malnourished and so if you're just now coming to gaps you want to eat all day long you want to eat whenever you're hungry you want you do not want to go oh okay i'm going from standard american diet or even from weston a price diet which i love many of you know i'm on their honorary board and love the weston a price foundation that's where i started teaching but if you're just coming into gaps, you want to eat all day. You do not want to be hungry. So you're drinking meat stock. You're drinking a mug of meat stock. When you wake up, you're having one after breakfast. Before lunch, you're having one, you know, between lunch and dinner. You're having meat stock, meat stock, meat stock. You're eating all day long. You're making sure you're having fat. You're having meat. You're having um, uh, ferments. You're having lots of good, you're having good salt, et cetera, et cetera. So when you first come to GAPS, you eat all day. There's none of this, oh, I can only eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You will starve, you will dysregulate your blood sugar, and you will not feel good. And then you'll say, GAPS is too hard, and I'm getting off this thing. So, um, yeah, so you really want to eat all day long when you first come to GAPS. And in fact, maybe for the first two, three, four months, maybe forever, listen to your body. One of the things I really try to emphasize to people is listen to your body. If you're hungry, your body needs nutrients. So feed it. If you're wigging out like you're crashing, your blood sugar is dysregulated. So have some fat and protein. You could have some of the blood sugar stabilizers, etc. All right, so back to this. Dr. Natasha writes it's a good idea to start around 10 o'clock. Yes, if you're on full gaps and you are already feeling good or you've already been on for several months. Okay, so why 10 o'clock? Because 10 o'clock, uh, because the body is in a detox mode from the time really 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. your body's in detox mode so it's a good idea after a while to leverage that detox mode and not eat a lot of food before 10 a.m. but that's not for people who just start on gaps in my opinion hope that's helpful all right let's see and when should be the last meal so <clears throat> Again, in the beginning, when you're really hungry, eat when you're hungry. Maybe your last mug of stock with beautiful fat and good salt in it, uh, you're having at uh, 8 p.m., right? But you're eating, you're not eating after 7 p.m. ish, ish, right? All right, let me see what else. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I hope that was helpful. So again, GAPS is a template. Gaps needs to be um, needs to be tailored to each person, and really, you need to think about where you are on the gaps diet. Okay, no problema. Let us see. Hello, Carol. Okay, Carol has a question. What do I do with all the meat from meat stock? There are two of us, and we are eating soup and stews. Is there a way to make the meat stock? Yes. There is a low meat meat stock that I have. I don't know if I've posted that yet. 
I should probably post it today. Let me write it down. Post low meat meats. I call it low meat meat stock. Um, that's my name. I don't know that anybody else uses it, but it makes sense, right? So low meat meat stock. So what do we need to make meat stock? We need meaty bones. The I'm putting it in quotes. Dr. Natasha says, what do you need? You need meat with a joint in it, right? So, so why? Because joints make gelatin. Joints make gelatin. Cartilage and connective tissue and joints make gelatin. And if you don't have it in that pot, you're not going to have gelatin, right? So yes, you can use uh, a low meat meat stock option would be for chicken or poultry would be um, necks. Necks are fabulous for meat stock. Necks, backs that are backs, right? Backs that have some meat on them. Wings, necks, backs, wings or a combination you can throw feet in there, but remember that chicken feet are not going to dissolve into the stock in an hour and a half to three hours. It's just not going to happen. So you need to pull them out, pull out all the bones, toss them. Thank you, little chicken feet. Put all of the connective tissue back into your stock and blend it in with a hand blender or in a food processor or in a blender. I like hand blenders, those immersion blenders. I go like this because it's a stick. You just go zzzz and it blends it all up for you. Yes, you can do that. I also really encourage people for low meat meat stock to use um, lamb neck bones, pork neck bones, beef, bison, game neck bones. Why? Because neck bones have less meat but they have all everything else. They have lots of connective tissue and they make a fabulous stock and they're not that expensive. So, so to answer your question, two, two things. One, you can make low meat meat stock, as I just said. And two, um, what do you do with it? You either eat it or freeze it and use it later, right? You can, um, I'm going to have my meat stock, my eight-week meat stock class up. It's now May. I meant to have it up by May 1st, but as you know, family matters got in the way. So um, I would like to have that up and online and doable for everybody by June 1st, where you can learn all the different ways to make meat stock, low meat meat stock, one pot meat stock, um, meaning one pot meal meat stock, um, meat stock from... Um, stew, casseroles, things like that. Anyway, look for it. I'm, I'm going to put up a dairy class soon. Uh, you can look for that too. All right, I hope that was helpful. All right, Christina, how long to starve pathogens? Like not even fruit sugar. So again, one more time with feeling entirely up to you as you implement the GAPS diet. Um... Remembering that intro, on the intro diet, and I hope all of you have downloaded my very well used, <laughs> uh, free to you meat intro diet chart, right? Go find it and download it and print it out for yourself. Remembering that on the intro diet, there is no fruit until stage four when we juice the fruit uh, I'm wrong. I'm looking at carrot juice. Carrot is not fruit. Sorry. No fruit until stage five. Yeah. Cooked peeled fruit on stage five. So, so in intro, we're not introducing fruit until stage five. That's like months down the road, folks. Right? Why? Because sugar feeds pathogens. Fruit feeds pathogens. If you start on uh, the full GAPS diet because you are prone to constipation or because it's easier for you to do because of your lifestyle, because you're just starting out, because you're learning, no problem, full GAPS. Yes, there's a whole list of what is allowed on full GAPS in here. That's a full GAPS diet list. It's also in here. Yeah, but remember... Depending on you, 
and you're, what you're trying to heal. Remember, we still want to starve pathogens. So when I work with clients, I'm go I, Monica, am going to suggest that people cut out fruit for at least, I don't know, three to six months. Why? Because fruit starves pathogens. It's going to help you in this, in this, you know, effort to rebalance your flora. Remembering that, um, yeah, fruit feeds pathogens, potatoes, all grains feed pathogens, etc. So I'm going to suggest people not do fruit for three to six months, even if they start on full. Now, do you just take it all out right away? No, maybe you work your way down. Maybe you, you know, slowly take things out. Maybe you have a child that's used to eating like six pieces of fruit a day, God forbid, right? So, sorry, um, if your child's doing that. But, you know, maybe you work it down to five pieces of fruit a day for a week or two weeks, and then you work it down to four pieces of fruit a day for a week or two weeks, and then three, and then two, and then one, and then out, right? You don't want to make anything too strong. If you're used to having lots of sugar in your diet and you just take it all, you cut it all out entirely in one day, you're going to be sick, meaning you're going to have a lot of die off. You're going to feel like dog meat. You're going to feel bad. You're going to feel like you've been run over by a truck. You might do a lot of vomiting. You might have a lot of exhaustion. You may have a lot of aches and pains in your joints. You may want to sleep all day. I mean, certainly you'll have blood sugar dysregulation. So, you know, just like when people go from drinking, you know, a whole cup of coffee a day, you know, probably not the best idea. And you've been doing it for years. You don't want to just go from a cup to nothing. I'm going to go to a, from a cup to a half calf, from half calf to nothing, right? It's really, I always say that it's better, I, this is my, you know, maybe you like to do things fast and furious, but I like to go slowly and easily, gentle on the body, right? Gentle on the body. Let's listen, you know, let's wean our way off things slowly. So the other thing, just to let everyone know, remember, Dr. Tosh is very clear that when you get sick, or when you have any kind of immune system challenge, maybe you get a cold, maybe, I don't even want to go there, um, but nuts and fruit out. Why? They feed pathogens. So that's, that's for Christina and everyone else. Veronica says, go no plants. Yes, I love no plants. I'm not saying everyone should do no plant at all, that's not correct, but plants are fiber, plants are cleansers, and remembering that when we have plants in the intro diet, I should get another one because this is embarrassing. Maybe not, I use it a lot. Um, when we use plants in intro, what are the, what are the pl vegetables we eat? We eat cooked vegetables in meat stock, very well cooked with lots of fat. We eat cooked vegetables in stews. We eat cooked vegetables in GAPS casseroles, right? Cooked, cooked, cooked. Then we introduce fermented vegetables. Stage three, fermented vegetables. No fermented vegetables prior to stage three, right? And then we start introducing things like, we don't even introduce um, raw vegetables to stage five. Why? Sandpaper on an open wound. Fiber, right? So again, if you are prone to constipation, you're going to need vegetables. Start on full gaps, stay there for a while, move back to intro later on when your digestive issue is clear. If you're not prone to constipation or you have diarrhea, intro is the way to go. Okay. <clears throat> Here is Sharice. I have a friend who is obese asked me for advice. God bless that friend. She did mostly processed protein diet, lots of protein shakes, and lost a lot of weight quickly, but noticed her skin is not tightening, flabby skin. She asked me for advice. What should I tell her? Would GAPS be good for her or WAPF? So, you know, obesity is really tough, folks. Usually there are underlying issues. I know a lot of people who are heavy and obese who do not eat enough food to be as big as they are. God bless them. So that means we've got, we've got metabolism issues happening. Um, metabolism issues happening. Metabolism is connected with 
thyroid. So a couple of thoughts, Sharice. Blessings to your friend. Um, her skin is not tightening because she probably, as you said, she lost weight fast. So she'll need to be doing um, exercise to build up some muscle, right? But also I would look into the iodine paint. Dr. Natasha talks about painting iodine on yourself to see how, how iodine deficient you are. She may need iodine. That would be helpful. Um, I would also suggest, um, because that would talk about whether or not her thyroid is online. I would also look at gaps um, because we need to turn. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about metabolic syndrome. So I would definitely read the piece on met metabolic syndrome that Dr. Natasha has in both the blue book and the red book, right? Red being the one on heart, blue book and red book. Go look at metabolic syndrome because people that are obese usually, well, there's multiple things that could be going on. One is thyroid. Two is um, certainly metabolic syndrome. And so how do we get the um, blood sugar balanced and all of that? I would look at gaps first, Sharice. I would look in the blue book and see what Dr. Natasha has to say. And um, I would make sure that she um, looks at um, blood sugar issues. Blood sugar, thyroid, metabolism. Those are the three things that I'd be looking at. The thing about GAPS is that we can get the met metabolic syndrome under control and reverse it, hopefully. That's why. I mean, I love WAPF, but... She may need a stronger, I'm going to say intervention, don't take that too seriously, but a stronger first movement, if you will, to get herself into balance. Okay. All right. So uh, we have Shukri here saying, how long do I stop that food? Uh, I'm not sure about which food, but send me another note and I can... Um, get back to you on that. Okay. Leonie says, not a food question, but can you please talk about castor oil packs and any hints and tips to make it easy, including cleanup afterwards? What do you suggest instead of plastic wrap to keep the oily cloth from dripping onto clothes and furniture? Okay, so castor oil packs. I think I put one of those on the page. Um, I would make sure, number one, castor oil packs, folks, is a wonderful um, support to the liver. So we usually put it on our liver as a detoxification aid. Very, it's an ancient, old, old time remedy that really works well. So the first thing I would do, Leonie, is not get your, uh, make sure that the flannel that you're using is not dripping. I mean, you don't, it doesn't have to be dripping wet with castor oil. Just make sure that it is, you know, so pour a little bit on, sh squeeze it through to get it to, to, um, uh, kind of soak the cloth, but don't soak the flannel so much that it drips. That's the first thing. Um, so just don't use as much castor oil. The second thing is you can store that cloth in, in a plastic bag in between or, you know, just to so that it doesn't, you don't have to wash it every time at all. Uh, the next thing is I love to use towels. So you could dedicate a towel or two to this process so that you just put towel on top. So First, it's castor oil uh, flannels with castor oil in it onto the skin at the liver. Second is I like to use a um, hot water bottle on top of that. And then I put a um, towel over all of it. That's the way. So just use a little bit less castor oil so that it's not dripping. And then I would use a towel or two to just wrap yourself so that you don't get all over. I don't like to use plastic wrap because, you know, plastic is certainly plastic wrap. Is so thin. Who knows how that stuff is leaching? Hope that helps. Hello. I think it's Caney, but I'm not sure. Hello and welcome. Vicky wants to know what to do with dry eyes. Ooh. Dry eyes is, to me, is a circulation issue. It's a micro circulation issue. 
remember that we have miles and miles, I don't know how many, 100,000 miles of capillaries and capillaries that we can't even see that are throughout in our eyes and our skin. So that's a microcirculation issue. I would work on, um, I would work with vitamin C complex. So ascorbic acid is a no-no, folks. Ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. It is the antioxidant wrapper of the vitamin C complex. So what, first thing, make sure you're not taking a bunch of ascorbic acid. A lot of people do. Um, I would really suggest a lot of cabbage tonic, a lot of recipe on this page, um, a lot of sauerkraut. Um, you need rutin, which is the... Um, yeah, rutin is a bioflavonoid. So lemon peel, orange peel, buckwheat. Thinking buckwheat greens, very high in rutin. So dry eyes, I might write a blog on that, but dry eyes is a microcirculation issue. And so we need the reason I'm saying rutin and C complex is that you need to make sure that the capillaries are strong. Um, and that's what you need to do that. All right, if I have more, I will post it. Vicky, okay? All right, Dawn asks, Hello, Dawn, I heard Mary Ruddick say that one reason not to cheat is once you feed the pathogens, they will be active until they die. How long could that be? Good reason not to cheat. It's a very good idea not to cheat, Dawn. Yep. Once you feed the pathogen. So again, we are really learning more and more about these microbes. And um, we also know that the majority of research that's been done about microbes and pathogens is really on candida. Candida, C-A-N-D-I-D-A. -D -D that is a yeast. Um, but they're just starting to scratch the surface on that. And of course, bacteria. So... We know that fungi and yeast love sugar. So do pathogenic bacteria. They love sugar. So I don't know their life cycles. We know that um, many pathogens or a certain type of pathogen lays eggs. And so you have to starve them until, right? You need to starve out the adults. You need to starve out the children and you need to starve and then the eggs are going to grow and then you've got to starve them out. And so, I don't know. How long could that be that they stay alive? I have no idea. Three months, six months, a year, two years. It really depends on each person and which pathogens we're trying to bring to balance. Let's just say, folks, that the entire American diet is built on carbohydrates and uh, they will not serve you. All right. Hello, Caroline. Woohoo, Caroline made it. Hello, Anna Maria. Hooray, good to have you. Haley says, we have gone through intro once for my five-year-old. Excellent. We are back at it and in day 14 of stages one to three. Excellent. So remember, the stages are discrete. So hopefully you did stage one for minimum of two, maximum of five days, stage one. Then you went to stage two. You can park, folks on stage two for a very long time. Some people need to stay on it forever. Those would be, um, don't worry, probably not you, but those are like, uh, those are really adults with severe mental health issues like schizophrenia, bipolar, um, things like that. They're just maybe uh, not high functioning autistic adults, et cetera. Stage two, Dr. Natasha has said, is the nutritionally complete stage. You can stay on that for the rest of your life. So good, good, good. Stay on stage two for a while, and then you can go and move to stage three. Remember, stage three can be dangerous, hazardous. That's too strong. Stage three can pose some problems, challenges, let's put it that way, because of the nut butter pancakes. So one more time with feeling, folks, really watch what happens when you bring in nut butter pancakes. Some people love them so much that they eat a lot of them, and then they have diarrhea, they have constipation, they have regression of symptoms. Remember that nut butter pancakes you want to make with 
Um, start with a nut butter, organic, sprouted is best, homemade is even better. Yeah, very little bit. We're always starting with a little bit and moving on. Yeah, and increasing a little bit. So yeah, stage three can be problematic because of nut butter pancakes. People are so excited to have a pancake, they have too many and then their symptoms come back and then we say, back to stage two, please. Okay, Otilia. Hello, Otilia. I hope I said that right. Welcome. How can I replace pizza? You can replace pizza with, uh, with my pizza muffin recipe. If you know how to ferment nut flour, almond flour, I have a pizza muffin recipe in my book right here. It's in the last uh, cooking technique section on uh, nuts, seeds, beans, and grains. There is a pizza muffin recipe. There's also, that's on page 205, and a pizza recipe on page 204. So again, this requires that you can tolerate fermented nut or seed flour. It also requires that you can tolerate cheese. So cheese is a very advanced food. It's high protein. It can constipate. So Go ahead and check those out. I'm very glad it's informative. Very glad, thank you. All right, let's see what else is going on. Okay, Leonie asks, as a follow-on, is it okay if ascorbic acid is one of the forms of vitamin C in the complex vitamin C mix? Yes, remember that ascorbic acid is the antioxidant uh, wrapper of the vitamin C molecule. So if it's part of it, that's fine, but you should not, best not to just be taking, you know, buckets of ascorbic acid and thinking that's vitamin C because it is not. And it will not help with capillary fragility or uh, with weaving together uh, that gut, right? We need to have sauerkraut, Cabbage tonic, vitamin C through ferments, plus uh, meat stock, which is collagen. Hello, Dawn. Dawn is here. Hello, Tove. Tova? Maybe it's Tova. I hope I'm not butchering your name, but welcome. All right. <clears throat> Christina says, I thought ascorbic acid is made of corn. Ascorbic acid, I don't know. It's possible that they're making buckets of ascorbic acid from corn, but ascorbic acid is the natural part. It's an antioxidant wrapper for the vitamin C complex as part of whole food C. So as part of, you know, sauerkraut, as part of cabbage, as part of whenever C is uh, in a food, vitamin C is in a food, it will be wrapped with ascorbic acid to, to preserve it, frankly. Okay. Wow, we got a lot to go. Let me keep going. Ba -ba 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 Carol says, yay, culture dairy class. Hello, Efren, good to have you. Dawn, meat stock class was helpful. Amen. Hello, Annika, great, great, good to have you. Amina says, which cheese is the easiest to digest? I would go ahead and look at the dairy introduction protocol in either the yellow uh, or the blue book, and that will tell you which cheese is easiest to digest, right? Any cheese that's cultured long. And then the first cheese that you start that's actually a hard cheese will be uh, an aged cheddar or an aged Parmigiano Reggiano. That's the real Parmesan an aged Locatelli, etc. Hello, Glenda. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Shannon says, hello, Shannon. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Georgiana. Oh my goodness, all these people. Good, 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 good. Hello, Roseanne. She is in. All right. Let me just say, I'm not going to get to all these in nine minutes, so I'll go back to the page and answer them. Let's just see. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Let's get to... I'm going back up. Okay. Haley says, the inflammation went away completely the first time around, and now he's back with a vengeance, and new joint is now affected. Yep. So healing is going to happen in layers. I love people to read Dr. Natasha's piece on healing in the blue book. You know, like... You're going to heal, and then something else is going to crop up, and then you're going to heal, and then something else is going to crop up. No problem. 
Work the diet, no problem. Veronica says, I mean, meat stock is like water for me, drinking it all the time. I love that. Good for you. Excellente. Okay, let's see. Hi, Monica. One's tolerant. Fat, fats, fat Z, Ali, I think. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Hi, Monica. Once tolerated, how would you consume? How would you recommend we consume milk, kefir, beet, kvass, sauerkraut, other fermented dairies, vegetables, and dairy? Eat it all day long. So, kefir, milk kefir, is a very powerful uh, tool uh, to bring, um, or food, to bring uh, your microbes to balance. Um, I wrote an article on the difference between cabbage tonic and beet kvass. I posted it on the page recently. Look it up and that will tell you what I think about when to have beet kvass versus when to have a cabbage tonic. Uh, you could also um, replace that with sauerkraut. Um, <clears throat> it's the best time of day to any day, any time. Eat them, have them, include them. Um, these are all wonderful foods. One of the things that I like to, um, one of the sayings I like to use with my clients is you have to get jiggy with ferments and cultured dairy. What does that mean? That means the, the job, the goal is to get to at least a cup and a half of fermented or cultured, cultured dairy or ferments every day. You get there and you can tolerate anything, you're good to go. So have your fermented vegetables and sauerkraut with your meal. Have your milk kefir as a snack in the middle of the day if you want, or have it with breakfast or for breakfast, really. Have them whenever you want. Let them be your foods. Let them be your foods instead of something else. Christina says, if I keep carrying extra belly fat, what does it mean? So, <clears throat> depends on your weight, uh, depends on your age. Christina, have you gone through menopause? That's the first question. If you haven't gone through menopause, extra be belly fat can mean that you're toxic. Um, it also can mean that you just have, you're very out of balance with your microbes. It also can mean that your metabolism is off. If you're carrying extra belly fat and you've, and you've gone through menopause, it usually is the body's effort to create uh, enough estrogen for you now that your ovaries have stopped producing estrogen. Okay, Haley says, we are heavy on yogurt, ferments, meats, organ meats, stock. Everyone was so kind to answer, excellent. Me, f this for me last week, but now that a new joint is affected, I'm having a really hard time knowing what to do. He was just diagnosed six months ago. We see a F FMP59 to get more testing. You know, Haley, here's the deal. Joints, 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 joints. You have a joint that's affected, eat joints. Everybody. You have a kidney that's affected, eat kidneys. You have a heart that's affected, eat heart. For people that have um, uh, joint issues, remember it's two, it's probably many things, but in my mind, it's two things. One is you need to supply the body with the building blocks to rebuild that joint. So eat joints and cartilage and, you know, make little cartilage ice cubes and throw it in every soup, stock, etc. Lots of cartilage. Um in the stocks, etc. The other thing is, so number two, we have to get inflammation down. What does that mean? Meat stock, meat stock, meat stock. Why are people inflamed? They're inflamed because they've got a leaky gut. Don't worry. We've only been on how long? No problem. Just keep the faith, Haley and everybody else. Keep the faith, work the diet, do um, just, you know, I wouldn't, I personally would not be looking at tests more than once a year. You have to give the food time to work. You have to give these healing foods time to work. Really important. So, hope that helps. Just, you know, in terms of yogurt, yogurt could be help inflaming him. I, I personally would be working 
Organ meats, joints, meat stock, lots of fat, lots of good animal fat for your little person. That's where I would go. And fermented foods, maybe. And back off the yogurt and get in the cultured cream. Much better for joints than yogurt. Okay. Liz wants to know, is gaining weight at the beginning normal? Maybe it was part bloat too due to die off. So could be that you're bloating because of die off. That would be a fairly normal thing to do. Um, you know, I have to say that some people lose weight, some people gain weight. Ultimately, over time, over 6, 12 months, the body will readjust to your best weight. That's what Dr. Natasha says, to the optimal weight for your body. Okay, Rosanna, woohoo! From Aurora, just down the road a piece. If we are unable to do all of the four pillars consistently, but do it most of the time, are we doing more damage than good? I.e., we do a good job at home, but at family, friend, gathering, or school, we eat some non-GAPS foods. Thoughts on this? So, yeah, I mean, just do the best you can. If you can do most, uh, do the four pillars uh, as consistently as possible, what are the problematic foods, folks? Anything that's going to feed pathogens. So sitting there and eating like a pizza that was made by, I don't even know, Domino's would be probably problematic. Why? Wheat, glyphosate, these are all hitting your gut, right? Uh, dairy that's not been cultured. Dairy that's full of uh, hormones. I mean, yuck. So, so pick your non-GAPS foods when you are at family or friends, uh, gatherings, etc. Really stay off the sugar as much as possible. Stay off the genetically modified stuff as much as possible. Um, and do your best. And then jump right back on. Yeah. You're not doing damage. Just do the pillars as best you can. All right. We've got Otilia. Sorry, Monica, could you please give me advice why my autistic son has recurring upper respiratory infections and ear infections? Because he's toxic. And because, I mean, I'm not God, but I would say because your child is toxic, remember that the um, oh, upper respiratory, so not lungs, um, because you have a microbial imbalance in the head. So if you read the yellow book and you read about glue ear, glue ear, Dr. Natasha talks about glue ear way early on. Let's see if I can find the picture. Glue ear, glue ear, glue ear, glue ear, glue ear. Anyway, you can read on glue ear. I would um, really take out the carbohydrates as much as possible from your autistic son and I would be doing what Dr. Natasha says, which is you, we need to rebalance the microbiome in the head. How do we do that? We take probiotics and we put it on the back of the tongue before bed and we let those probiotics, this is a supplement, repopulate that area. That's what we do. That, you just have an imbalance in the head. No problem. Let's repopulate by putting probiotics uh, at the back of the tongue every night before bed. Make sure it's a clean probiotic. No FOS, F-O-S, no inulin. Um, you can get BioCult is one of the original uh, probiotics that Dr. Natasha worked on when she was developing probiotics back when. So I would just rebuild this area. Um, lots of ferments and uh, rebuild the um, microbiome in the head by putting, Dr. Natasha goes through that in the book too. You can look at that, look that up. All right, hello, Georgiana, woohoo, Vickery. Hey, Vicky, Vicky Emery's here, yay. Hello, Shannon, hello. all right, Shannon says, can you sub chicken gravy, we call it, knuckle skin cartilage blended in a low amount of broth for the broth? Yes, do it. Yes, good idea. I love it. Give her lots of gravy. Shannon, good idea. I love it. Okay, Christina knows. Do we need to blend and eat that? Yes, you do, Christina. 
The more you eat it, the faster you'll heal. No question mark. And remember, last the last uh, so the last Facebook Live I did, which I think was two two weeks ago, we talked about the importance of stomach acid. If your stomach acid production is low, your body will not be able to use the knuckles, skin, cartilage, etc., chicken gravy. So please, everyone, check your stomach acid. All right. Hello, Glenda. Woohoo! All right, we're going down, we're going down, we're going down. Okay, Vicky says, are we supposed to do intro with constipation when we know we have candida and histamine? Okay, Vicky, go back and watch my, uh, I don't know which one was on histamine. I did one recently. Um, jump on my YouTube, which is Monica Corrado. I think I have one labeled for histamine. Watch that, please. Okay, I am healing from five rounds of surgery. Oh, I'm so sorry, Vicky, Vicky. And antibiotics. So, no, we are supposed to do full gaps when we have constipation. Okay. I would cut out fruit and nuts and seeds if you have candida for sure. I'd cut them out for three, six months. And I would be having lots and lots of your healing from surgery, lots of kefir. Kefir cream is better for you, Vicky, because you don't want to be constipated. Right, folks? So kefir cream versus milk kefir. Very good for you. And um, lots of good fats. Yep. And lots of ferments. Yes. Blessings. Blessings on your journey there, Vicky. Hello, Sabrina. All right. Caroline. Hello, Caroline. How do you feel about adding salt? Nope. Well, you could, actually. You could add a little bit of salt to whey and water when you're fermenting nuts if you want to. Just a little bit. Remember, pH is important. Okay. Hello, Muna. Or Muna, Muna, Muna. Hello. Okay. What food do you use to stabilize blood sugar when you cannot digest fat and most vegetables? So I think I answered this to you directly. What foods stabilize blood sugar? Protein and fat protein and fat. So if you can't have fat, then, uh, or you don't digest it well, use just a little bit of fat, but I would just be having protein through the day, meat stock, meat stock, meat stock with good salt and a little bit of fat. That would be the best. And if you cannot digest fat people, what does that mean? What do you need? Ox bile, ox bile, Ox bile, again, one of the, look in here for supplement list. It's right here. Dr. Natasha talks a lot about if you cannot digest fat, go ahead and use ox bile, even for a child, just a little bit to help the body get used to digesting fats. Okay. Would you also suggest not having gap shake for three to six months, or can we make gap shakes with just vegetables if you start with full gaps? So gap shakes are fine, folks. Um, remember, the gaps shake recipe is in the blue book. It's the first and only time Dr. Natasha has printed it. It's, uh, it's I think, on page 81. Nope, page 80 in the blue book. Make sure you're able to tolerate whole eggs, whole raw eggs, white and yolk, and fat, meaning either cultured cream or some other fat, coconut oil, etc. Those are very important parts of the gap shake. So you could absolutely have a gap shake. It will help gallbladder, liver function, etc. Yep. Hello, Umu, Nadia. All right. Dawn says, thinking about the sandpaper issue with ferments, would you look at fermented beets like you would sauerkraut? Hmm. If you ferment long, folks, if you ferment vegetables long, they won't be too sandpaperish. Remember, this is a scale, as always. Your raw vegetables and raw vegetables with skin on them will be the most rough. And fermentation is one of those pre-digestion techniques that helps to break down the cellulose, which makes it 
right? It's the fiber, it's the cellulose, it's the cell walls of the plant that make it like sandpaper. Okay. Hello, Jody is here. I, okay. Dawn says, I store my castor flannel in a plastic bag in the fridge for up to three months with no issue. Excellent. How long on the castor oil packs? Um, you can start with 10 minutes once a week and then increase the amount of time. All right, folks, we got a lot. Hello, Nora. Hello. Okay. My autistic son also has chronic constipation as well as he is asking for nappies for his big toilet and has food texture issues. You know, Otilia, I have a fabulous uh, feeding your autistic child course um, that I did with my friend and colleague, certified GAPS practitioner and nurse practitioner, Amy Mahali. You may want to check that out. I will put it on the page. It has a lot of information for, for that. Thank you, Roseanne. Glue ear, page 311. I love it. Okay, there's a lot more in here. Let me look and see. I'm not sure. I can stay on about five more minutes. All right, let's see. Joanna says, I am very new to yogurt making, and I recently purchased a yogurt maker. I understand that for gaps, we need to let the milk start our culture for 24 hours. Yes, but I was wondering if we should leave it alone during this process. Yep, leave it alone. Yep, you just leave it alone. No problem. 24 hours. Yep, for yogurt. Good luck, and let us know if you have other questions about that. Okay. Uh, yay! Hello, Marta. Yes. Thank you. Parmigiano Reggiano. Ah, eh? yes. Thank you. Uh, I get a star for great pronunciation. Don't eat Parmesan, people. It's crap. Pardon my language. It's made in Wisconsin, and it's not real. Has to come from Parma in Italy. Okay. All right, I got two more minutes on, folks. Shannon says, getting raw milk, have a dairy concern with my girl. She's also constipated. Is the best way to give, is the best way to give her to do 24-hour yogurt and then use grain starter to do kefir. Will this be the best dairy? She seemed to do okay with goat milk kefir from the store that I recultured. So one more time with feeling, folks. And uh, I wrote about this somewhere. I don't know. It's certainly in my book on culture dairy, but milk is high protein and it can constipate. Cream is high fat. If you have an issue with constipation, better to start with cream than with milk. However, if you're working with goat, you can't get goat milk cream really easily. So you can start either place. Yogurt would tend to constipate less probably than kefir because kefir is uh, so powerful and potent. So just start somewhere. Um, start somewhere. Pick one or the other. Or start slowly. Okay? And listen to her body. Start slowly. That's all you can do. That means a little bit once a day and then gradually... Um, Gradually increase the amount. Haley says, yes, I have read the immune system section, collagen disorder, bone and teeth. It's wonderful. Thank you for taking the time. You're welcome, Haley. Just, just everybody, folks, everybody, just do the diet, keep the faith, joints, joints, meat stock, joints for anyone with a joint disorder. Blessings. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Hello, Monica. All right. Okay, so these are my last questions, folks. Anna Maria says, oh my God, I have to be on another call in like four minutes. So let's wrap this up. When I make goat kefir, the whey separates and a part of it I pour separately to get a bit thicker kefir. Great, that's whey. Yeah. Can you comment on the difference of the probiotic benefit of whey versus the thicker kefir? Also, which part to use topically in case of vaginal candid? Okay. So I would use the kefir itself for any kind of candida issue, topical. Uh, also, you can use it internally for any kind of vaginal um, yeast infection. 
They are both incredibly good. I would use both and not worry about it, Anna Maria, whatever works for you, okay? All right, Christina says, I have a very hard time seeing this diet as a way of life. I'm sorry that you do, Christina. I can't focus on 30 days now. I'm very miserable. I don't have many issues. I'm hoping maybe I don't need all these months, but now I can't even focus on it because everyone says months, so I just drop it. You know, Christina, up to you. Everyone has a choice here. Months, you know, for you, maybe you need no fruit for two months. Maybe you can do fruit. Again, I'm not working with you personally, so I can't, I don't know your story. I don't know your background. I don't know your symptoms. So I, I can only speak generally, right? Generally. Do what you can. Anything you do is going to help. Anything. If you start just doing meat stock two or three times a week, making pots of stock, if you start by just starting to in, add milk kefir into your life, you will have healing. Try one thing, do it for a month or two, add another thing, right? Remember, GAPS is a healing diet. It's not supposed to be forever, except for very, very sick people, very sick. But most of the people that are with me on this call, GAPS is a healing diet. It's a therapeutic diet. You're supposed to be able to heal and move off and then have grains and, you know, good things. Yeah? Okay. All right, folks. I need to go because I need to jump on another call. Hello, Meg. Good to have you with us. You're welcome. You're welcome, Veronica. You're welcome, Dawn. Good to see you. Good, good, good. I'm going to go back. I have a couple more things I need to answer. I think I have one, two, three other questions. So I'll be back later this afternoon and answer those by typing, okay? Be well, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take good care of you. Keep the faith. Pick one thing and do it. If that's all you can do right now, perfect. All right. Be well, everyone. We'll see you next week. Same gaps time, same gaps channel. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.